So now, Alan McMurrigal and the work team. My name is Alan McMonagle. Unfortunately, my, my voice has gone a little bit. I'll, tr I'll try my best. Um, I'm from uh, the, the Word magazine, which is a Glasgow-based magazine where we publish um, fiction, essays, and the uh, works of illustrators. Um, our, our first issue of the magazine, we were very fortunate that the, the great Tom Laird kicked it off for us by giving us a couple of unpublished poems um, and that the first issue of the magazine sold out and very quickly we found that there was a, that an, an, an audience for the magazine and, um, and it felt really like the audience came to us, that there was an audience out there that wanted a, 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 you know, a, a magazine that was committed to publishing literary art and we are completely self-funded, we don't take funding from anywhere so, and we, we make our money back to sell on magazines and, and books and, um, and then we um, put something new out. In the second um, issue of the magazine, um, the, the wonderful Alan Warner um, actually um, did a tremendous interview with us that I, I still go back to and, and read because it's, it's such a fantastic um, interview where he talks about narrative art and I'm delighted that Alan Warner's here tonight because he's um, such a great writer. And we brought out after that an anthology called Tales from a cancelled country which is available at our stall and we, it was Alan Warner who gave us the, the title for that. In the most recent issue of The Word um, we have a, ch a, a chapter from an unpublished novel by James Kelman and a 23 page interview with James Kelman and these writers like um, James Kelman and Janice Galloway is also in this, this issue, these writers like um, Tom Leonard Alan Warner, James Kelman, Janice Galloway, and in the next issue, Duncan McLean. These people have really, really supported us, and also there's a lot of work by um, new writers in, in the world. So tonight, um, we're, James Kelman had asked us to um, help organise this event with um, Spirit of Revolt, and we've been really happy to do that. And tonight, we are here um, to um, read some of the poems um, that were on the original CD um, that's being um, sold tonight at the Spirit of Revolt um, stall. And some of the writers are no longer with us. Um, some of the writers just, just couldn't read tonight. Um, so we're just going to have a, a little succession of about um, six or seven people that will get up and read these very, very kind of short poems one after the other. Unfortunately, as often happens in these nights, um, our first reader um, had to unexpectedly go home and she was going to read a very important poem. But um, we more than made up for it because um, we're, we've got a, a great first reader, Gary Lewis, who's going to read the first poem. And then after him, we're going to have a sequence of maybe um, six younger poets, younger writers um, reading these poems. So here we go. The first poem is by Freddie Anderson. Freddie Anderson uh, made an enormous impact in, in my life. He, he wrote the play Crassity, and, uh, which was the first real play that I took part in. And me and a, a, a bunch of folk from uh, Easter House, we, we all camped out in a three apartment, and 16 years in a three apartment, Craig Miller, <laughs> and we put this uh, play on at the Edinburgh Fringe. And Freddie's play won the, the Fringe first that year. And uh, he's an incredible man. And this uh, poem is about the Aberfan disaster, which I guess everybody knows about. Um, it's in the Vale of Aberfan. The clouds of grief roll down the vale to the town of Aberfan, and silent are the narrow streets where bright-eyed children ran. In prayerment, the lifelong day, and many a summer span, heard songs and tales of ancient whales in the Vale of Aberfan. O brave, courageous mining folk, 
What cruel sacrifice! In lowly homes amid the hills you pay a bitter price. Disasters roll at Pontypridd, Newport and Brynamon, but be little dreamed how the tears would stream in the Vale of Aberfan. It was in the year of 66, the children were at school, when suddenly the mountain slag became a raging pool. It blotted out the sun and sky, the schoolhouse overran. And our children fair were murdered there in the Vale of Aberfan. Curse the cruel hand of greed, no gold can satisfy. And our innocence and our laughter's fair, it heeds no children's cry. The lily of the valley's crushed by callous prophet's plan, and mothers weep as their loved ones sleep in the Vale of Aberfan. called Glisglin and Drumlochy by Hamish Henderson. From the summit of Crockmaher, I look on the lay, on fat Strathmore and its broad largest of lochs, black loch and white loch, Fengus, Marley, Clooney, where the bolstered curlers come. But back I turn northward and stand at nightfall under Glisglin by the canyon cleft of the shaggy, sh shabby shanty Lornty. The shaggy, shabby, the dowdy, duddy, lornty, that marked the clannish confine. There were two castles, two battled keeps, Drumlochy and Glasgloon. They kept a blood feud vainly on the boil. They sat on their ears and they gurned fair, fair gait the other. I'll paisley your fist, I'll brackley your inverai and atween the scrogs of the dowdy, duddy, lornty. Drumlochy's laird was a slew-eye, dye-blue bloodhound, who fought as his sires had fought, with steel, cold steel, and said the other mugger couldn't take it. But Glasgow knew six of that. He was progressive. And to be in tune with the times was all his rage. Now one day he went out and bought a cannon, a queer old toy unknown to the lad next door. With this he gave Drumlochy a thorough pasting. Dang down his wall gave his stately pile the shakes. In fact, block bust him quite. The moral of this, said Glasgow, with ill concealed Hidalgo satisfaction, is that right and ready starter in the Donnybrook stakes must still rise early to possess the field. Now we me Glasgow, Glasgow and John Lockie, they bashed other blue by the backside on Rocky. John Lockie fought fair, but Glasgow the deceiver made free with a firework to blow up his neighbour. Then shame, black shame, I shame on the bloody blares. Shame on the blares and sick wadi for races. They think nay sin when they put the boot in, in the eyes of all civilised folk, to disgrace us. Lochin, Drumlochy, Glasgow and Drumlochy, to a hertz or a shiv, and a shitten larach. delivered it for me to fill my hand, stone heavy and stone cold. It wasn't grey or blue, but both, like stone. It wasn't wet or dry, but chilly damp. It was great and long, the egg of a cliff nester. I brought it home to brood over, <laughs> plot possibilities, orc, albatross. I was loath to be certain. So it was placed and left on some high shelf. Years later, when my hand would cover it, 
I know all about Universal X. Euronymy, Ephion, Dove and Serpent of the Pelasgian creation myth. The marvellous hatching of world, sun and stars. I looked for it. It was smashed somehow. The stench of that yellow pus sticks to my nostrils yet. The Nidini Notton Cherbo by Eddie Boyd. The Nidini Notton Cherbo, read at a dilly gone sun, could tell, tell gonna opened its mumu where it was all begun. For when he had his will o' me, his love got cold and sore, and when he had his fill o' me, he laughed and called me hoor. The bittern, blattern, balky bird, the nicht to his eeldrich e and a tate that was black as a nymph o hell, and glaver the podded sea. Fruto O'Connell, a shape o' him small, we horns that blind hate had gained skill, we muckle lang preens as taken him o' his heat and his hurt and his heel. I stood at the deathbed and grat like a bride, outside I could hear the mort bell, but nobody kent, I was laughing inside. Nobody kent but myself. <laughs> Rebel Tam by Joe Corey. When Rebel Tam was in the pit, he thawed the very pangs of hell, infecting for the richt o' man, and gain a thought unto himself. If I was just in Parliament, by God he vowed, they soon would hear the trumpet call of revolution blasting in their ear. Now he is there, backbencher Tam, and listens daily to the farce, O oh, Tweedledum and Tweedledee, and never rises off his arse. This is the Adam's Rib by Anne Thompson. She rose from the cradle of his sleep. Her white hair was plaited with moon. Her breasts dazzled the first stars. Her body was the light under his eyelids. The sun that woke him and roused the dark inside him. Her mouth tasted sweet and new. He wanted the gift of making. She took him inside her. Now she lies among thorns, wearing the dress of his shadow, knowing light and dark have been woven into her, and how in her warm belly the snake will quicken and uncoil forever. And this is the last sift by Edward Hunter. When the last bit is closed, and to the sun, the miner turned his face, erect and free. The last shift worked, and the last black dawn won. What do you deem the miner's speech will be? How will the master world greet him then? I tell you, for I know his mother well. Stronger than metals, she has reared her men. I've seen his father carve his bed in hell. He had no soul to sell, I've heard you say. You with your serpent scent had naught to buy. Now he's here, fronting the light of day. What would you plead in answer to his why? Far over the eights, long beats, he stood alone. A world where none but he might live and rule. Midst the then dead million years, his image shone. One day you call him hero, next the fool. Hero or fool, he stands before you now. That man who, with whom the sun you will not share. The dews of stars fall on his ragged brow. The wandering winds weave music in his hair. The last bit closed, his last made staff for bread. He stands erect amid the race of men. The bleached, the broken, and his media dead. The way he came along his kingdom then. I tell you, for I know his mother well. 
stronger than metals, him she nursed had soul. By this sweet light, where God meant men to dwell, what will ye now do for your bloody call? This is Starry Felt by Edwin Morgan. Starry Felt, slave, south Venus, serve, sharp fill, shove, shriek volley, swerve, ship village, save, spur vengeance, stave, spade voice, starve, strike vault, strive, subvert, starve, smash for vort, strive, scatter forechecker, starve, spade vow, strive, sudden vast, starve, survive, strive, so five victus. <laughs> um, this is Itinerary by Edwin Morgan. We went to Old Shore Moor. Is the Old Shore Moor still there? You mean the Old Shore Road? I suppose it's more an old road than a shore road. No more. They shored it up, but it's washed away. So you could sing the old song. Yes, we sang the old song. We'll take the old, old shore, more shore road no more. <laughs> we passed the muckle flogger. Did you see the muckle flag? All we saw was the muckle fog. The flag says Ultima Flugger was like us. Couldn't see the flag for fog, sorry. Ultimately, ultimately we made the muck for... <laughs> ultimately we made for muck and flogged the lugger. Was it bleak at the Bauhaus bog? It was black as a bog house boy. Yes, but bleak. Look, it was black as a bog and bleak as a Bauhaus. The Bauhaus wasn't black. Would you get off my back? <laughs> so there were dogs too? Dogs, hogs, leaks in the bogs. We never went back. <laughs> I know a man from Denver called Mr. Mac by Tom McGrath. I know a man from Denver called Mr. Mac. He sings ten songs in the evening, does a touch of tap. One, two, three, four, shuffle ball change on the kitchen floor. He learned it from a black man down in New Orleans. Steps without a handle, pitter patter through his dreams. Heel toe, heel toe, over the log and away you go. He danced upon the table, he danced down the hall, he danced along the sidewalk, he felt ten feet tall. Shim sham, pull backs, bucket a wing and a buffalo. He danced all the way from Denver to Rome. Well, as far as we know, he won't ever come home because he's a dancing man, a prancing man, a buffalo romancing and a dancing man. Back in the woods, deliver the goods, a flap and a spank and a chug ball change. Shim sham, pull backs, pick ups, grant rolls, coffee grinder wings, and a lot of other things. Slaps, riffs, scuffs, dig, brush. And if you meet a man from Denver who's got tap in his brain, better set your feet in concrete or he'll drive you insane. Cause he'll dance you around the kitchen, dance you down the hall, he'll dance you down the street and he'll just let you fall. Thanks everybody, um, that's us. I just want to say a, a, a final thanks to, um, we've been rehearsing for a few days, but for Gary for stepping in at the very last minute. Thanks everybody. It's, it's just re really so good to hear like uh, Freddie, Freddie Anderson's work, Hamish Henderson's work and Tom McGrath's work. And really, Eddie Morgan, it's just great to hear it done by the young team, like, as we're doing it.